Welcome to Cage Minds. I'm your host, Micah Frankel. It's fight week for LFA 97, the first LFA of 2021. And joining us is one half of the main event. Welcome to the show, Nick Brown. How you doing, sir? Good. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. It's fight week. I thank you for taking some time out of what I'm sure is a hectic schedule to join me. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get ready, prepared, stay safe. How crazy is fight week with COVID protocols? How different is fight week now compared to what it used to be? Uh, it's definitely different trying to, you know, limit your training partners, limit your gym activity, and, you know, all the while trying to stay safe and, you know, get ready for a, you know, an all out war. And getting ready for a fight against Arthur Estrazoulis that has already been booked once. You guys were supposed to fight at LFA 95. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the situation that led to the fight being canceled that first time? Um, yeah, we were just uh, too close to a uh, COVID case. Uh, they deemed it, you know, since we were, we were close to it, you know, that we probably had it, which, you know, when we ended up did have it. But just to be, be on the safe side, they did uh, cancel the fight. Tony was, you know, obviously, you know, pretty devastated, but, you know, ready to run it back. So scheduled it, about to run it back here shortly. So you're going to fight in November on the 20th, and now here we are six weeks later, seven weeks later. Uh, what did that do to you? In, in You know, you were in peak shape. What happened after the fight's canceled? Did you get right back to training? How did you handle it? Um, definitely kind of, you know, hit a few hard practices, try to, like, knock off the, you know, the edge we had, you know, to prepare, you know, try not to peak out too soon again so we had to you know hit a hard practice and then toast and then start start right back in the camp you know already in shape already pretty well down the weight just you know eating right not going overboard too much how disappointing though was it being in shape and being there in kansas and having the fight called off um definitely definitely disappointing you know but you know, it's what you do after, you know, losses or heartaches that, you know, prove the, the mind and the heart of a champion. So, you know, taking that one on the chin pretty hard and then bounce back from it is going to be just a great story to tell one day. Did you take a couple days off after the fight was canceled? Um, yeah, yeah, just to kind of get, you know, set up right, get your mind right, just to, you know, hey, we're still pushing through this, so, you know, back to the grind after a few days. How long after the cancellation did talks of the rebooking happen? Um, almost immediately, you know, my manager contacted me, LFA said, you know, if you're, if you're ready, we'll, we'll get you on the next card available. I said 100%. So, you know, we're always ready and just ready to get back into it. Fight for this title. Right. It's a big one. The belt is on the line. Did it matter to you to get Arthur rebooked, or was it more important to get the title fight rebooked? Um, uh, yeah, definitely the title. You know, it, it does suck standing up somebody, you know, for a title fight. You know, if they would have dropped out, it, you know, it felt kind of bad that they had the shot. But, you know, I'm kind of happy he stuck with it that, you know, we got to find out, you know, who's the best at LFA right now. So, you know, I'm pretty pumped for that. Does it just get tiring back-to-back -back camps for the same opponent? Um, you know, we get more in depth, so, you know, we don't really, you know, jump around too much, kind of the same, you know, it was, it was a little monotonous, you know, training for the same person, doing the same things, and then, you know, it gets canceled, and they're like, well, we got the same guy, okay, same thing, but, you know, that's, that's a part of the grind, and what makes you, you know, excited to fight is, you know, preparing for somebody, going outside your comfort zone, so we were, well, we were always ready, and continue to be ready was there any uh, positives that you found in getting the fight postponed and having this extra time um you know i was you know every fighter will tell you they never fight 100 percent. but i was walking with an injury probably two weeks out from the fight you know it wasn't going to deter or cancel the fight but it was definitely 
you know, not a relief, but like, hey, okay, now I can fight him 100%, and we'll really see, you know, who's going to be the best. When you look at you and Arthur, both of you guys have BJJ black belts. Both of you guys, I think three of your last four victories have come by first round finishes. But those are really the similarities. The the black belts, you're both finishers, but you do it in your own styles, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know he has more jujitsu style. I have more wrestling pressure. So it's going to be, you know, it should be the wrestler that stands out in this. But, you know, we're, we're going to find out. Any chance the old adage of when we see two great grapplers, we just get five rounds of a kickboxing match? Do you think there's a possibility of that? Um, we're definitely preparing for that. You know, we, we've got the ground game pretty much, you know, solid. You know, we can improve a little bit, but, you know, we're pretty solid. So we, we definitely stuck to our guns and, you know, prepared for a uh, stand-up war. And, you know, if he wants to take you to the ground, we're ready for that. If he wants to stand, we're ready to, you know, get the finish on our feet too. Looking at Arthur, what are some of the more finer points that you have to be aware of of his game? Um, you know, he's an opportunist, you know, any, anything, you know, given to him, he's, you know, taking advantage, you know, gets it back, he's finishing, you know, standing up, he's going to, you know, look for that opportune moment. So it's just staying ready, staying, you know, tight, staying, making sure, you know, our heads where it needs to be, our arms need where it be, and just, you know, putting the pressure on him so he makes mistakes and we don't. As you progress in your career and the challenges have getting gotten harder, do you see this so far as the toughest challenge that you've had in the cage? Um, I like to say yeah, but you know the last three opponents were kind of about the same. You know, as him, same kind of record, same you know, same discipline of grappling. So you know, we're gonna we're just gonna keep beating the best until you know it's it's nothing but you know the you know top fifteen and you know the world or UFC. So. We're just going to keep grinding it out, beating whoever they set in front of us. Seven finishes, five by submission. What is it about your style that opens up these finishes and so many in the first round? Um, you know, it's just that explosive factor. Whenever that you do, you know, fight a wrestler, you got to you know, be wary of that. But you know, it's just a multitude of training partners I have, and you know, the discipline I've put in years of, you know, mixing wrestling with, with BJJ so I can get the explosion to a point and then I can finish where whenever I need be. And I know t- people talk about it all the time, but can for you, for your game, talk about how important that wrestling background is for you? Um, definitely, it's, you know, it's where my, you know, we always say plan A is to, you know, strike with them, but plan B comes out quick whenever, you know, they land a hard kick or a hard punch, so... You know, that wrestling is definitely, you know, the back of my mind said that, you know, if I, if, if maybe I get caught, then I go to my backup, which is, you know, my best, my best asset. So, you know, that wrestling definitely puts a grinding factor, makes them worry that, you know, oh crap, can I hang out with them for this long or, uh, survive this much pressure? So, you know, wrestling is definitely a, a gift. I think that MMA fighters, it's a different breed of competitor with you guys. There's something different about MMA fighters to go through the the grind of training six, seven different disciplines sometimes and still doing strength and conditioning and the dieting to compete in this sport where a lot of other sports you just practice that sport. What is it about this sport while you're devoted to it? Um, yeah, it's it, just going to back on my basics of wrestling. You know, that, that was a grind of, you know, just pushing yourself mentally till you break, you know, once you're broken, sometimes you got to cut weight, you got to push through, you got to hit these walls so hard that, you know, you, you continue through them and they don't, you know, you don't fall flat on your face. So MMA was about the same, you know, learning these disciplines over, but, you know, incorporating, you've always fallen back on wrestling. So it was that same kind of love for the grind that, put uh, MMA in my heart like wrestling did. Got the main event coming up on Friday night on UFC Fight Pass. Like we said, it's rebooked for the second time. What will it mean to you, third fight in the LFA, to pick up that belt? Uh, it means everything. You know, it's a lifelong, 
goal to be, you know, one of the best. And this is this is my prime opportunity to be one of the best in LFA. I believe there's only been, you know, five title holders at the lightweight. You know, I'm, I'm planning on being one of the best. That, you know, if it's, this is my, you know, after winning this belt, if I get the call up or not, you know, I'm still going to just, you know, fight fight the best because I want to be the best. We want to be uh, ranked as the best and holding that belt is going to show that, you know, I'm one of the best. What do you think separates you and Arthur come Friday night? Um, well, I guess they're going to have to tune in to find out, but you know, it's, it's going to be that, that first kind of first round who sets the pace and who backs up a little bit more. And, you know, with the pressure, I, you know, I always put on my opponents that I think he's going to, you know, go to plan B or plan C. So I really like to, you know, use the pressure in wrestling just to set the pace and, you know, start mauling him from there. He's Nick Brown. The nickname is Nyquil. And I must ask how you got that nickname. Um, I, Along with being an MMA fighter, I'm also a professional boxer with two and zero record. Not very many boxing fights, but in college, I boxed for uh, Shippensburg University. And you know, the first year I boxed for them, I was knocking people out, breaking ribs, and you know, they weren't making through the first round. So he's like, "Man, we gotta, we gotta give this guy a fitting name." And they came up with Nyquil. So you know, I said, "Let's just roll with it." And you know, it's it's pan down MMA, putting people to sleep and knocking them out. So Nyquil it was. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, sir. Last but not least, got to ask you, how can everybody keep up with you on social media? Uh, they can definitely, you know, follow me on, you know, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Nyquil Nick is, is uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter. So definitely trying to get past all those uh, days of the hackers trying to, you know, mess with me. So, you know, I got a slow following now, but it's just going to get more explosive as I win this belt and I, you know, move on further on my career. Did you have anybody that you need to thank or shout out to? Oh uh, yeah. I'd like to thank my sponsor, uh, uh, Suavecito tequila, uh, definitely helped me, you know, push past a lot of, uh, barriers with food and training gear. You know, that was, you know, off offset, uh, jolt bike for, uh, always, you know, believing in me and helping me along the way and TGB supplements with my guy, Trevor Banco, you know, definitely helping me with the supplements and, and uh, milk cuts. It's the first LFA of the year, and there's a title on the line in the main event. I'm so excited, everybody. You have to tune in Friday night, UFC Fight Pass. Again, Nick, thank you for the time. Yes, thank you.